My name is Alan Edge, glad to be here, and I'm going to be speaking a little bit about proper use of the microphone. The microphone. Not only for television, but also for uh, public speaking in general. You want to be heard. That's it. So first of all, and I noticed even tonight that, and I usually teach this when I teach theater, this is not a natural part of your body, and if this is not something that you're used to working with, you forget it's even there. And you start talking and it disappears. One of the first things that I teach students is you need to develop a desire to be on. This is Toastmasters. Toastmasters speak in front of people, in front of people. There must be a desire to be heard. That's why when you have a microphone, those who have a desire to be heard, cannot let you cannot get the microphone out of their cold dead hands okay uh, the microphone is your friend I even suggested perhaps maybe when you're at home get a, a broom handle or something that's kind of like a mic and just carry it around with you all the time even though it's not a mic just you used to having it I, I've been in this for 40 years I'm a stand-up comedian so I, I naturally have a mic I've had times when I've had a lavalier mic on and then my hand naturally went up and there was nothing there. Because each and every one of you have something to give. Each and every one of you have a voice. Huh? You have a voice. You have a way of saying something that no person else, no one else can speak the way you speak. Even if it's a, a subject that everyone knows about. You have a different perspective on it that no one has. You have something to offer to those who came to see you, to hear you. Maybe if it's just one person out of 500, what you say may change a life. And because of your timidity and your shyness and your humbleness, you have the mic down here and get this thing away from me. And it's like, oh my God, you know. And, and, and you're denying that voice to an audience. Develop a desire to be heard. Your desire to be heard will then lead you into the proper use of your microphone. Your desire to be heard will have you come in ahead of time. Before the call time, I always show up an hour ahead of time for a show. Get there an hour ahead of time. When I perform stand-up comedy, I come in to the place, wherever it is. I could be at a church or a club, whatever it is. I come in and let the contact person know, I'm here, relax, where's the tech guy? And I go immediately to the sound person. The sound technician is an artist, too. What you're doing up there reflects on them. If the sound is lousy, they're going to wonder, who is the sound guy? My God, he's terrible. So he's going to want to know, he or she is going to want to know what you're going to do, what kind of mic you're going to use, what kind of sound, do you have a tape, do you have a DVD, whatever it takes to make all of you sound good and sound professional. Now, the different types of mics. Uh, there is uh, the omnidirectional mic. Omnidirectional mics, there's, you, picks up sound all around the bulb. Okay, this is a bulb. That's why it just drives me mad. It's like chalk screeching on the board when I see rappers and people that grab the board. And the very source that needs your sound is now covered up. Hello, anybody home? So omnidirectional means, uh, an omnidirectional mic will pick up sound not only from you, the speaker, but ambient sound around you which is really good for picking up additional sound. Now, it can be uh, uh, somewhat limiting because of the fact that it is picking up all that ambient sound, which can drown you out, to pick, depending on what kind of sound is going around you. It's a good uh, distance from your mouth. So that you're not like, because you ever been, you hear somebody talking at the mic, it's like, is that right, go Zach? Because they have it too close, and it's all being garbled and drowned out. So you want to have it at a certain distance. You see people like Patti LaBelle, who can take and throw the mic down and fill up a whole house. I've seen her do that a couple of times, just to show and fill up a whole auditorium. Well, people like Patti LaBelle or Jennifer Hudson, you'll see them play the mic. So the louder they get, they'll pull it back, and they know exactly what that is. It's like playing an instrument. So that, you know, that especially if someone sets your sound level, they set the sound level, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you're good. And then when you get ready to do the show, you're like, yo, whoa, they're like, whoa. And so they're getting distortion. So it's up to you, the performer or the speaker, to modulate the distance in order to compensate for additional thing. Or oh, if you want to be real deep and get real up on the mic, 
like this. So that you're playing the mic, okay? You can't do it with a lavalier because you can't do the little choices or play it with a lavalier. You're stuck. Now, in closing and summarizing, first of all, you want to be able to make sure you know what type of mic you're going to be using so you know what adjustments you need to make. Secondly, you want to uh, come in, check with the sound person, solidify what you're going to be doing, get the uh, testing and levels for your voice. And thirdly, and most importantly, desire to be heard. Desire to be heard. You have a voice. Yeah? Desire to be heard. You have a voice. Desire to be heard.